welcome to this next class in the last class we have seen how do we use all the information for diffusion and reaction inside the catalyst particle and do calculations find out kinetics or design or how do we measure uh, kinetics using berti reactor or carberry reactor or a packed bed which has the flexibility of changing the uh, superficial velocity or changing the particle size all these considerations that we had made in the previous class assumed that there was no heat effect meaning the temperature inside the catalyst was the same so we could define it by a single value of rate constant k the rate constant was the same at all locations inside the catalyst because temperature was constant this lecture now we are going to start looking at more about heat effects and how these heat effects can change situations dramatically dramatically before we go forward let me just show you where we are with respect to our course we are on part 5 of our course this is the last lecture of part 5 of our course we are looking at external and internal heat transfer in catalyst particle this is what we are looking at we had looked at this diffusion reaction we had looked at some design aspects now we are looking at heat transfer effects just to help you to revise and just to get you to uh, re about the previous lecture so that you are better prepared for this lecture how does rate of reaction vary if rate controlling step is external mass transfer or diffusion or intrinsic kinetics draw some contactors that can be used for measuring kinetics of a fluid solid catalytic reaction and describe experimental protocol that you will use to measure kinetics using these contactors these are called as model contactors why because they allow us to flexibility of changing various parameters to measure the intrinsic kinetics how should the active species in the catalyst be distributed when the reaction is controlled by external mass transfer when the reaction is controlled by pore diffusion when the reaction is controlled by intrinsic kinetics how catalyst is to be designed okay, we saw this when we were talking about thiele modulus what is the meaning of thiele modulus how does concentration change inside the catalyst particle for different values of thiele modulus we have seen that okay revise if you want go back and see the lectures then go forward okay so recall the definition of effectiveness factor effectiveness factor is actual rate of reaction divided by rate of reaction in absence of diffusion limitation so draw concentration profile in catalyst pellet assuming that heat effects are negligible heat effects are negligible means temperature is constant everywhere inside the catalyst draw pause and draw here is the answer so if we think about concentration this blue line so blue line concentration there is no external mass transfer resistance so it this bulk and surface concentration they are same then it diffuses and reacts inside and if the reaction is fast ca reaches zero well before it reaches the center okay if external heat transfer is not important then the surface temperature will also be equal to bulk temperature ts if you like ts and tb would be identical T center also will be identical if conduction of heat is very fast inside the catalyst pellet. Now the question I am asking: Can the effectiveness factor be more than one? Think about this. Think about this. What is our definition of effectiveness factor? Effective diffusivity C A S A L. Phi tan phi divided by K C S A and L A is the cross-sectional area. A, A just cancels out. That's whether it is not there. Important point: this A is going to cancel out. It's not not important. This gave you tan phi divided by phi. And remember that what is the definition of phi? hyperbolic tan of l root k by d effective and this k 
phi in the denominator is again L root k by d effective. Now, important point is what k do we consider? At what temperature do we consider this k? Here, there is not a problem because whatever temperature we measure in the bulk, temperature everywhere is the same. So, we can calculate this k based on the bulk temperature. So, when you define the effectiveness factor, this k is calculated at the bulk temperature Tb. But is that the correct temperature? Is that the temperature at which reaction is happening? If there are strong heat effects, if it is highly exothermic reaction. Okay. What if the reaction is highly exothermic and rate of heat transfer is limiting inside the catalyst or in the external film? I want you to draw temperature profile for the following case where bulk fluid to particle heat transfer resistance is controlling. In this geometry. If bulk fluid to particle heat transfer resistance was important, how would the temperature profile look like? Draw. It would be like this. It would be like this. Reaction is exothermic, so temperature inside is larger than the bulk temperature. So, heat is transferred out, A diffuses inside, but heat diffuses outside because inside is where heat is generated, that is where temperature rises and if external mass, external heat transfer is limiting, then temperature would be uniform here, no heat transfer limitation inside the pat catalyst particle, all the heat transfer resistance is in the external film and then T. So, you see now, if we calculate K based on bulk temperature, but reaction is actually happening at a temperature higher than the bulk temperature, reaction happens at temperature greater than bulk temperature. What does that mean? What does that mean? Think further, if conduction within the particle was controlling, how would temperature profile look like? If external mass, external heat transfer resistance is not, not important now, negligible, then whatever heat is generated, that would slowly get conducted away. Rate of conduction is controlling, rate of contraction is slow. So, there will be a strong temperature gradient inside the particle. This is how it looks like. Temperature in the bulk is less, temperature at the center is high and there will be a diffusion. This may or may not be straight line. I have just drawn a straight line just for, just for understanding purposes. But it need not be a straight line. Again, reaction happens at temperature greater than the bulk temperature. Whereas the denominator, in the denominator, we are measuring K at the bulk temperature. If you like, effectiveness factor is actual rate of reaction. in catalyst divided by K C A S. This K we are measuring at the bulk temperature. This K we are measuring at the bulk temperature. But actual reaction is happening at a much higher temperature. So, then this it can happen that actual reaction is far far greater than the K which we measure at the bulk temperature. Then effectiveness factor can be more than one. Let us try to quantify. Okay. Let us try to quantify. So, if you write generalized conservation equation for species A and enthalpy, 
these are the two equations that you will get. You've done this in transport phenomena, right? This is source term, sink term for A, source term, sink term for energy. If we simplify for steady state one dimensional diffusion in a catalyst pellet, it will become d effective d square ca by dx square is equal to k0 e raised to minus e by rt ca. This is kca. In the previous classes, we had just taken kca because temperature was constant. And thermal conductivity d square t by dx square is k0 e raised to minus e by rt ca and minus delta h. Now you are recalling the early lectures where we had taken, about, taken into account heat effects. If you combine these two, you will find that temperature at any point is equal to, inside the catalyst is equal to surface temperature divided by effective diffusivity minus delta H by KT CA at the surface minus CA inside the catalyst particle at any location. Let me just draw what I am. Let me just draw just to make sure that everybody understands what we are talking about. This is a catalyst pellet. How is CA going to look like? Let me draw in blue color. CAS, diffusion and reaction inside. At any point, it is stem, concentration is CA. If I draw in red color the temperature, let's say external heat transfer limitation is not there. Temperature at the bulk, same as temperature at the surface. Then it is going to be higher temperature inside at any point is T. So this T is temperature at any point here minus Ts or equal to Ts here surface temperature. Okay. CAS concentration at the surface, CA concentration at any point inside the bulk. Right at that point we are sorry. We should show temperature not at this point. We should show temperature at any point here. T. Same point. Same x location. Okay. Isn't this similar to our earlier situation where we had defined delta T max? How did we define delta H CA rho CP? Recall now it is effective, now it is not bulk, but it is by conduction and diffusion. That's why this effective diffusivity and thermal conductivity is appearing for the catalyst parent. I can substitute this equation in this expression, then I will get concentration profile. Then I will define effectiveness factor. Do you see this? Let's just do. We are not going to do the whole derivation. We are just going to see some effects. So see some, uh, see some parts. So maximum temperature is when T S is zero. Oh, oh. Maximum temperature rise occurs when not T S. We should say C A is zero. Let me make that correction. Just wait for a second. Okay, so I made that correction now. Maximum temperature difference. Look at this expression. Maximum temperature rise will occur when CA is zero, like 100% conversion. When we are defined lecture two, lecture three, lecture four, that kind of thing. Delta T max would be CAS, effective diffusivity, delta H by KT. In that earlier case, it was CA entry, if you like, delta H rho CP. Now it is conduction and diffusion. That's why it is D effective and KT. Let's define some dimensionless parameters. Gamma is like dimensionless energy of activation. We are defining based on surface temperature. And if external mass transfer is unimportant, surface temperature and bulk temperature are the same. Beta would be delta T max by Ts. Okay. So delta T max by Ts. Beta would be CAS, effective diffusivity, delta H, KT, and thermal conductivity and Ts. And define dimensionless the concentration CA bar as CA by CAS, X bar as X by L. Substitute. 
So we'll get d effective d square ca by dx square. That was our equation k0 minus e by rt into ca. Make it dimensionless. D effective by L square, D square C A bar by D X square. C A S has cancelled out. E raised to gamma beta into 1 minus C A bar divided by 1 plus beta 1 minus C A bar into C A bar. This equation, now this is our Thiele modulus. Phi depending on the externally measurable surface temperatures, surface rate constant based on surface temperature. So this equation we need to solve now with respect to boundary condition. Then you will get how CA varies with X bar as a function of course. So this when you solve, you are going to get CA bar as a function of X bar, but it is also going to be dependent on gamma and beta. So from here you will get effectiveness factor like we had got. Effectiveness factor will be dependent on values of gamma and beta because we are defining Thiele modulus based on surface condition. We are defining Thiele modulus based on surface temperature and if external mass transfer and heat transfer are not important, we are defining Thiele modulus based on, we are defining Thiele modulus based on measured bulk temperature. So, eta would be a function of Thiele modulus, gamma and beta. So, if you see this paper came in science 1962, uh, Weiss and Hicks, the function eta as plotted in terms of phi s, gamma and beta. Here are the values. So, gamma is small, means energy of activation is small. You see, eta can be more than 1. This is, this is 1, right? 1.0. It's not very clear, but it is 1.0. You see, effectiveness factor can be very large, 8, 9, 10, depending on the values of beta. What does beta tell you? Exothermicity. Beta is telling you exothermicity. And gamma is telling you how sensitive the reaction is to temperature. Beta is an indication of exothermicity. Higher the exothermicity, higher is the value of beta. Stronger is the temperature dependence on reaction uh, of reaction rate, stronger is the value of higher is the value of gamma. How E depends on how our rate depends on temperature, influence of temperature on the rate. If it is strongly influenced, means gamma is high, energy of activation is high. Dependence. of rate on temperature. You see, gamma is equal to 20, gamma is equal to 30, gamma is equal to 40, means I am making reaction more and more temperature dependent. You see, this goes up, goes up, goes up. You see, the scale has changed. Huh? This is up to 1000 and this is up to 10,000. So, if you like the peak and beta is increasing, beta is increasing, beta is increasing, beta is increasing. Look at the peak for beta equal to point, I think point 0.8 or so, can't see very clearly, point 0.8 is about 8.9. Here it is about 100, 200, 100, 150. This is about 1000. Effectiveness factor is 1000. Here effectiveness factor is 2000. And this is all based on phi at the surface. You can also see that multiple steady states will exist. So, for this particular value of phi, if you take, you see, eta can be 1, eta can be this value, or eta can be this value. Right? Multiple steady states will exist when phi s is less than 1, less than 1, and beta is more than 0.2, more than 0.2. More than 0.2. When phi is less than, right? 
there will be no multiple steady state when this parameter 4 into 1 plus beta is greater than beta gamma. We are not going to do this. We are not deriving these. I am just giving you the results that these are the cases you can calculate values of gamma and beta. Gamma and beta you can calculate without actually doing reaction means they are dependent on just delta H and E and effective diffusivity and thermal conductivity. You can know these values of beta and gamma a priori before you start doing reaction. Then you can think about whether these conditions, whether these kinds of effects are going to come into picture for your reaction or not. Okay, something about external mass transfer, external heat transfer. Now. If R observed is the rate, reaction rate, in terms of kilomoles per second per meter cube of the catalyst, rate of heat generation would be R observed into minus delta H into volume of the catalyst particle. So, rate of heat transfer from pellet to bulk gas would be heat transfer coefficient, surface area, T surface minus T bulk. So, at steady state, we can equate these two. That gives you a delta T temperature difference across the external film. And you can this is volume of the pellet divided by surface area of the pellet. If it is a spherical particle, it will be dP by 6. So, this allows you to estimate what is the maximum temperature difference across the catalyst particle external film. This temperature rise we are talking about. This temperature rise across the film. And inside this rise, that's our beta. Maximum is beta. Okay, so here is a problem. Here is a problem. Experimental data along with some properties for a first order gas phase reaction A going to product at one atmosphere 336 degrees centigrade with a spherical catalyst particle are given below. Particle size 2.4, effective diffusivity 1.39 to 10 raised to minus 8, thermal conductivity 0.44 watt per meter Kelvin, delta H minus 160 kilojoules per gram mole. Take care of units. CA bulk 0 0.02 gram mole per liter, RA observed rate 0 0.0278 gram mole per liter per second. Energy of activation 60 kilojoule per gram mole. Take care of units. Particle to gas heat transfer coefficient is 44.4 watt per meter square Kelvin. Particle to gas mass transfer coefficient is 0 0.0833. This is your external film heat transfer coefficient. This is your film mass transfer coefficient. Here are some questions for you to answer. Is the external mass transfer limiting? Is the pore diffusion limiting? Would there be temperature gradient within the catalyst pellet? Would there be temperature gradient across the gas film? Is the effectiveness factor likely to be more than one? So, use the data, use the uh, formula, whichever formula you like from the last three lectures lecture 14, lecture 15 and this lecture. Use any formula you like. Go back, read those or see those lectures. Think about all these things. Use any formula you like. Treat it as if it is an open book problem. Open internet. Do whatever you like. Solve this problem. Pause and solve. Then only go forward. Here is the solution. Pause. Don't go forward. Mayor's criteria. What does it tell you? R observed dp divided by 6 kf cab. 
0.0278 take care of units sir 0 0.0278 dp 2.4 dp was dp 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 2.4 millimeter r observed let me write units here for you r observed gram mole per liter per second diameter meters 6 mass transfer question meter per second obviously 6 has no units we don't have to write ca bulk gram mole per liter then all these things will cancel out then it's dimensionless so take care 0 0.0067 what do you conclude external mass transfer is not limiting external mass transfer resistance is insignificant which means c at the surface is same as c at the bulk why spreader parameter r observed l square d effective by cas r observed r by 3 d effective cas take care of units r observed is gram mole per liter per second meter square effective diffusivity meter square per second ca bulk gram mole per liter take care of units 16 what do you conclude pore diffusion resistance is very high remember weiss prater criteria is like weiss prater parameter is like phi square phi square is 16 which means phi is 4 significant pore diffusion resistance is significant let's go forward Temperature gradient within the particle. What do you have to calculate to estimate temp whether temperature gradient is there within the particle or not? What parameter? Delta T max. Delta T max is CAS effective diffusivity minus delta H by KT. CAS gram mole per liter. Effective diffusivity meter square per second. Delta H. Now take care of units. Delta H is given in terms of One sixty joules kilojoules per gram mole. So I have to do one sixty kilojoules. So into ten raised to three joules per gram mole divided by thermal conductivity. Thermal conductivity is. Thermal conductivity, where did it go? Thermal conductivity, 0 0.44 watt per meter Kelvin. What is joules per second per meter Kelvin? What will it be? Be careful. That's why I'm saying care. Take care of units. Joules will cancel away. Gram mole will cancel away if you like. Second will go away if you like. You look at this. This will have units of meter square, Kelvin, liter, meter cube. Right. I need another factor of thousand. That's this. 10 raised to 6 that's why it is 10 raised to 6 or if you like or if you like if you like let me write it in another way concentration cas we can write as kilomoles per meter cube gram mole per liter is same as kilomoles per meter cube 0 0.02 into effective diffusivity is in meter square per second delta h now it can be joules per kilo mole. Then it would become 116 to 10 raise to 6 divided by what? It is joules per second meter Kelvin. Then kilo mole will cancel away, joules will cancel away, seconds will go away, meter square, meter cube, meter will go away. Then we will have in Kelvin. So take care of units. Anyway, the value is 0.1.
which means there is not much temperature rise across the pellet you see you see thiele modulus is 4 y square is 16 which means ca concentration of a in the bulk of the catalyst pellet center line is going to be zero so that's why the delta t max tells you what is the center line temperature and the surface temperature that difference is only 0.1 so practically catalyst is isothermal what about temperature gradient within the gas film this we have R observed delta H dp 6 H take care of units again 40.1 what do you conclude there is significant temperature difference between the surface of the particle and bulk of the gas and between the surface of the particle and inside of the particle there is not much temperature gradient. that means the whole particle as such is significantly hotter than the bulk gas significantly hotter than the bulk Further, what is the next thing that we wanted? Here is the next thing that we wanted. Is effectiveness factor likely to be more than one? Answer. Pause. Solve for yourself. Gamma is E by RTS. E divided by R divided by TS. Surface temperature surface temperature is surface temperature 336 336 degree centigrade is that correct no it is hotter surface temperature is larger than the bulk temperature by an amount 40 degrees so it is 376 actually. Anyway, I will tell you why it does not matter. 376, this should be 376. So gamma is around 10 maybe. Dimensionless temperature rise, beta. Beta is small. If beta is small, what do you conclude? Beta is small. Gamma is 10, 11. Gamma doesn't really make too much difference. Beta is 0 practically, you see. Beta is 0. Practically, it does not make any difference. So, whatever, even though we have calculated the value of ro gamma wrongly based on surface temperature, we should calculate. We have calculated based on bulk temperature. Okay, that's okay. Because bulk is what we can measure. Right? That's why we have calculated it based on bulk temperature. T bulk, if you like. Beta is negligible. If beta is negligible, there is no question of effectiveness factor being greater than 1. Do you see? So, all the things that we have discussed in this lecture, they are, you can solve this problem. You are in 4th edition, chapter 12, problem 12, 14, you can solve. CRE 11 spills book, 3rd edition, chapter 18, problem 80. 1820 to 1825 you can solve so this completes our part 5 of our course part 5 of our course understand all these things see how these things are important in design in reality when you want to improve performance of a reactor how you can do it think about it we will stop this lecture here and in the next lecture we are going to see the last part of our course related to fluid fluid reactions.